Man, a saga of the outback specially dramatized from the prize winning novel of R.S. Porteous. <laughs> Cattle Man. Goodbye with her sister Judith, much to Dan Clancy's dismay. Three women about the place, including Britty, was just too much for the old warrior. And to add to his problems on their first morning home, Anne had had a visitor in the person of Sergeant Dunn, the local police officer from Baranda, who was obviously intent on getting his own back by telling Anne of my trouble with the law. Dan managed to get Anne inside and promptly ordered Dunn off the property. The sergeant refused to leave, and Dan picked up a pitchfork in an effort to persuade him. You're trespassing on private property, Sarge, and I got a right to deal with trespassers as I see fit. Oh, Dan! Dan, what's going on out here? What on earth are you doing? Let him do it, Sergeant. I'll run you clean through. That's a promise. Uh, oh, uh, I was uh, just showing the sergeant yeah, how sharp these prongs are. He's uh, thinking of buying one himself, and he wants to get the best. Uh, nothing like a practical demonstration, I always say. Hey, Sarge? Oh! Uh, what was that you said? Speak up. We can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Mrs. McCready. I, uh, I've been needing one of these things for long enough. Just ain't got round to buying one. Why would you want a pitchfork, for heaven's sake? To keep them veranda roughnecks in line. What else? Police officers got to be prepared for every kind of emergency, uh, like when someone talks too much or gets rowdy. Ain't that a fact, Sarge? Yeah, that's a fact. Well, I'm sure the sergeant's had sufficient demonstration, Dan. If you're not careful, you'll tear the seat of his trousers. Oh! Oh, my, my, how clumsy of me. I do beg your pardon, Sergeant, to a slip of the wrist, but... Oh, this ain't no sight for a lady, and uh, you better go back inside before the sergeant gets embarrassed. Oh, dear. And what is it? What's happened? Well, it's all right, dear. The sergeant's had a slight accident. Uh, go into the shed, sergeant. Dan, you bring his trousers in and I'll mend them. He can't possibly go back to town like that. Now, come along, Judith. <laughs> How did he do it? Stand in it with a pitchfork. His hands in it. Clancy, I'll kill you for this. I'll kill you. Steady, Sarge. You lose them all together. You owe me life up. No one ever made a fool of me like you just done. Take it easy. Take it easy. I'll buy you a new pitch. Well, I'm living. They've gone inside. Now you can breathe easy. I reckon Ed was right, that. Wouldn't do for you to be seen in town like that. You duck in the shed and take them off, and I'll take them into her. You stitches, I'll be good as new. Your missus will never know the difference. Uh, You've got me now, Clancy. You've got me good. But there's going to be a next time, and by heavens, I'll I'll fix you, Apricot. I'll fix it so you... You want to mend it, or don't you? Then get in that shed, and get in there fast, or you'll ride back at Baranda as you are. Dan? One pair of trousers. You did that on purpose. On purpose? Whip the sergeant's trousers? Now, why would I do a thing like that? That's what I want to know. You have some explaining to do, Mr. Clancy. Well, it was an accident. I never would have believed them prongs were so sharp. <laughs> By the look of him, I'd say you certainly proved your point. It's no laughing matter, Judith. The sergeant was about to tell me something to do with Ben. And that's when you called me into the house. Uh, we can uh, talk about it later. If you don't get a move on with them trousers, the poor bloke might catch a chill. Then he'd really have something to complain about. Here we are, Sarge, all sewed up so as you'd never know the difference. And about that. Ah, not so fast. Before I do, I'm going to need some guarantee that you won't go straight back into the house and spill the beans. You can't stop me telling her. Nothing you can do is going to... You want to bet? I have here a piece of paper. You're going to do some writing on it. Then you're going to sign your name at the bottom. And when it's done, you get your trousers back and not before. (laughs) You know, 
This puts me in mind of something that happened a long time ago, involving a pair of trousers. They belong to our old pal De Lacey, and he never stopped to argue about nothing. Fancy, I warn you. You've got two minutes to write what I tell you. If not, there's going to be another accident. These trousers is accidentally going to catch on fire. So let's get started, eh? Put the date on top. I ain't writing nothing. I, Sergeant Bob Dunn of Veranda, admit full responsibility for... Better hurry it up, Sarge. Your time's running out. No. Listen, Clancy, I... Full responsibility for not having personally checked to see that the way bill I issued Ben McCready, granting him permission to shift 350 head of Coolabar stock to the New South Wales border, was in order. You got that? Even if it meant saving my life. Your I... life won't be worth living if you ride back into Baranda without your trousers, Sarge. You'll be the laughing stock of the territory. And what'll I be if I write down a thing like that? Out of a job, that's what. Well, there's no reason why anyone should ever see it. Just so long as you keep your yap shut about Ben. It ain't too much to ask. It ain't much. Why, you... You've got till I count five to start writing. One. Clancy, I'll give you me word I won't say nothing. Two. I won't come near the place again. Three. Unless... Look, I swear to you, I... Four. All right, all right, I'll do it. Ah, that's more like it. I, Sergeant Bob Dunn... Of Miranda, admit full responsibility for not having that the above is true in every detail. Then sign your name. Uh, what was that last bit again? I solemnly swear that the above is true in every detail. Ah, now, your signature. Yeah, I reckon that should do it. I'll just put this safely away. And here's your trousers. I've heard a lot of stories about you, Clancy. Most of them I never believed till now. There's one thing you can believe, Sarge. When I make a deal, I stick to it. Now, there's no reason there should be any hard feelings over this. I promised Ben I'd do my best to protect his interests, and that's all I'm doing. Dad! Dad, can I come in? Sure! The Sarge is respectable again now. Sergeant, I must apologize for Mr. Clancy. It was really too careless of him. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. McCready. Uh, wasn't none of you doing? Before we were so rudely interrupted, you were going to tell me something about Ben. Oh, uh, well, uh, well, uh, it was nothing important. Just about a way bill I made out for him a while back. Uh, I didn't bother with it. Now, uh, Mr. Clancy cleared things up. Are you sure there's nothing else? No, nothing. Well, in that case, perhaps you'd care to join us inside for a cup of tea. Judith's just made a party. Ah, uh, thanks all the same, but I've got to be pushing off. A lot of things to do in town. But surely you can spare... The sergeant's a busy man, Anne. We wouldn't want to keep him from his duty. Well... Now, glad you stopped by, Sarge. Like I said, I hope there's no hard feelings. Next time I'm in town, I'll call in and buy you a drink. What's up? Have you forgotten? You promised me an explanation. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right, so I did. Well? Well, there are certain things that don't bear too much talking about. Such as? Such as things that might hurt innocent people, like... like Anne. You intrigue me. What could Sergeant Dunn have to say that could possibly hurt Anne? Well, I reckon I don't have to tell you how she feels about Ben. In her eyes, he's a... He's the air she breathes. He's everything that's worthwhile. That's about it. She sort of put him on a... on a pedestal, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. I wouldn't want to see that pedestal kicked out from under him. Would you? No, I wouldn't. Is it in danger of being kicked out from under him? It was. But I reckon the danger's past now. I see. Thank you, Dan. What? For paying me the compliment of confiding in me. I won't ask any more questions, on one condition. What's that? That you teach me how to ride. 
Think she had a what? To ride a horse. I've never ridden one before. Never ridden a horse? Never. Well, I'll be blood. Here, I thought she was an educated woman. Oh, uh, certain aspects of my schooling were overlooked. Oh, so you, you want me to teach you? I'd be very grateful. Of course, you know that horses are pretty temperamental. They are? Oh, crikey, yeah. You've got to know how to handle them. I'm sure you can show me. Well, there's uh, certain things you've got to learn for yourself, such as how to fall when they chuck you. How to fall? Uh, so you don't break no bones. Oh, dear, that wouldn't do at all. I once saw a fella thrown 23 feet up, landed on his skull, bang. Was he badly hurt? They buried him next day. Oh, you wouldn't be trying to scare me off, would you, Mr. Clancy? Hey, oh, I wouldn't do a thing like that. You want to ride, that's fine. Come on, I'll give you your first lesson. No? Why not? There's old Sally over there. I'll get her saddled for you. Huh, quiet as a mouse she is. Oh, there's uh, just one thing to watch with her. Oh, what's that? When she throws you, keep your head covered so she don't trample you. Trample me? Yeah, it's a kind of habit of hers. Oh, she don't mean nothing by it. It's, uh, it's just her way of having a little fun. Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Crazier, I think I might leave my first lesson till tomorrow. I just had Anne fix my hair, and I'd hate to have Sally mess it up. the situation well in hand at Kula Bar. And on the other side of the world, me and Danny were facing another kind of situation. The one that was going to take a little longer to settle. Candleman, a Grace Gibson radio production.